What's up everybody? It feels like it's been a minute since I've recorded a vlog. So I am here at TCH Dallas, my home poker room here in Dallas, Texas. And it has been quite a month by far the craziest travel month I've ever had in my life. I was in Mexico, I went on a cruise, it was absolutely incredible. It was a vacation that was much needed. I hadn't been on a vacation in like over two years. And then I headed straight from there to Panama where I played in these Poker Bros tournament series and it was incredible. I had a few deep runs and a few caches, so that was awesome. And then straight from there, I headed to Tunica, Mississippi where I played in a Run Good event. The prior time I'd been there, I got second place out of over 200 people for about $9,000. And then this time around, I finished 12th in the same event, almost made that final table. So that was a blast. And then I literally headed straight from there to Kentucky, Franklin, Kentucky, to go do a meetup game at Triple Barrel Social, a brand new poker room in Kentucky. So if you guys are in the Nashville area, it's not too far from you. It's a brand new, really nice poker room. And it's owned by a lot of your favorite poker vloggers and characters in the poker community. So today, I am at Texas Card House. I'm going to go play in the $365 20K guarantee Saturday tournament. And then after that, going to play some cash, hopefully get some good hands for the vlog, and I'll see you guys inside. I made it to CCH Dallas to play in the $365 $20,000 guaranteed tournament. And this is a great one with 30 minute levels, 30K starting stack, and a decent structure. So of course, in Ashley fashion, I late reg. So blinds are 400, 800, 800 to start. However, I didn't play any hands that level. So moving into the first hand that I played, the blinds are 500, 1000, 1000, and I have 28,000 in chips or 28 big blinds. In this hand, I look down at ace three of clubs under the gun two, and I raise it up to 2,000. Off of 28 bigs, we can still open all of our suited aces, especially being a bit short-handed. Only the big blind calls, which is a great result, and we go heads up to a flop of 10-10-5 with two diamonds. My opponent checks, and now on this board texture, he's gonna have to fold so many hands out of the big blind. As you can see, our opponent's calling range out of the big blind is so wide, so therefore, he is going to miss a lot of flop textures, and this is one of them. It's very hard for my opponent to have a 10, really only a five or a flush draw can continue, or if he has a hand like sixes, sevens, or eights, etc. However, he's just gonna have a lot of garbage on this flop. So I put in a small C bet of 2000, which is two big blinds. My opponent makes the call, so then we head to a turn card, which is the ace of diamonds. My opponent checks yet again. We do make top pair, however, we do not have a kicker. And the diamond flush does come in, so I think it would be a great spot to check behind here and see if we can induce my opponent to make a bet on the river if we have him beat, because our exact hand is a fantastic bluff catcher. The river is an offsuit deuce, and now my opponent leads for 7,000 chips. There's nothing to do here other than make the call, as if we raise, we only get called by hands that have us beat, and my opponent might perceive us to not have any ASEX in our range as we checked behind on the turn. We pretty much snap call and beat 9-7 offsuit. So my opponent was getting a little ambitious and we scoop a very, very nice pot to start this tournament. So now we have 41,000 chips at 500, 1,000, 1,000. In this hand, there's a little bit of meta involved where my opponent had accidentally mucked the winning hand, the hand prior, and he looked very, very tilted. In this hand, we're about 40,000 effective at 500, 1,000, 1,000. Under the gun limps, and I look down in middle position at Queen Jack Asu. Normally, I would like to isolate in this spot. However, I decide to limp this time. The button limps, the small, and the big blind come along, and we head five ways to a flop of Jack, Nine, Five with two hearts. It checks all the way over to me, and we have a pretty great hand. I bet 2600. The button calls, and then the tilted player under the gun who limped rips all in for roughly 17 big blinds. It folds back around to me. I think my hand is a little bit too strong to fold here. My opponent can be doing this with a hand like queen 10, 6 7, 7 8, any and all heart draws. We have top pair queen kicker, and I would like to think if my opponent had a hand like ace jack or king jack, he would have raised pre flop. So I stick in the call, not thrilled about it, but hoping that we're ahead and sure enough my opponent has jack six of clubs for just top pair with a six kicker. Luckily for us we hold up, knock out our opponent, and now we have 67 big blinds. In this hand, we get to capitalize off of my opponent's mistakes. Blinds are still 500, 1000, 1000. I have 67,000 chips or 67 big blinds. And now we're able to maneuver our stack a little bit and pick up chips. A lady in middle position raises to 3000 off of 12 big blinds. 
In theory, this lady should just be shoving almost every single hand, except for, of course, aces and kings, possibly some others, but for the most part, she's just gonna wanna rip, especially with 12 big blinds and not raise to three big blinds. I'm in the big blind with eight five of hearts, and this is a little bit of a tricky spot. I don't really wanna fold. My opponent is probably not constructing her ranges properly, and there is a big chance I can take this away from her post-flop, so I'm gonna peel. We go heads up to a flop of queen, six, seven with one heart, so we flop an open ender and a backdoor flop straw. So I think my opponent's gonna have a lot of ace-x hands like ace-jack, for example, maybe even some smaller pocket pairs. Sure, she can just have a nutted hand sometimes, but when people raise 3x in these types of tournaments, they're usually wanting to protect a mediocre and vulnerable hand. So for this reason, I have some equity. I definitely think against this opponent, I have fold equity as well, because there's a very high likelihood that my opponent is just counting the number of chips she has and is not aware of how many big blinds she has. So I decide to rip all in and put her to the test, and if she calls, we're still alive. If she folds, then we pick up a lot of big blinds. My opponent shakes her head, and then she folds pocket eights face up. So there's a couple mistakes my opponent made in this hand, and I was able to capitalize on them. If she would have shoved preflop as she should with a hand like pocket eights, I just fold and she takes it down. A hand like pocket eights is a hand that wants to see all five cards for the exact reasons that happened to her on the flop. I was able to get her off the best hand with my eight high because usually when you have smaller pocket pairs, there's going to be over cards on the board and you're not gonna know how to navigate post flop. So we were able to push her off her equity and get the fold with eight high. Now we have about 72,000 chips to use kind of the same strategy we used in the previous hand where there is an under the gun limper who only has eight big blinds behind. I'm next to act with ace three of diamonds. I think this is a great spot to try and isolate and if he goes all in, we'll be happy to call with our suited ace for only eight more bigs. So I raise it up to 3000 and it folds all the way around to him. He makes the call so he leaves himself only six big blinds behind. We go to a flop of eight, eight, five with two clubs. I have watched this specific opponent play super fit or fold the entire day. If he doesn't hit the flop, he folds. So on this flop texture, we can shove and get all of his king highs, queen highs, and even hands like jack 10 to fold. Of course, if he has a pair, he's probably not gonna go anywhere, but that's okay. More often than not, we're gonna get this opponent to fold. So I shove all in, he snap folds, and it's a great spot to realize when the players don't understand how many big blinds they have and what they're supposed to do with their stack, we can take advantage. And now we pick up a very decent amount of chips. Now we have about 79,000 chips at 600, 1200, 1200. In this hand, I have 73,000 and blinds are 600, 1200, 1200. Under the gun raises to 3400. It folds all the way around to me in the big blind and I look down at ace, queen, offsuit. This hand can definitely go either way between three betting or putting in the call. And I like to mix between the two. I don't know much about my opponent. We have a decent stack. We don't need to increase our variance at this point. So I put in the call and we're gonna go heads up to a flop of king, deuce, deuce with two hearts. I check and my opponent should be down betting this board. It's a king high, very static, dry board board, but he goes for a pretty big size of 5,600, so I don't even get to peel with my ace-queen high, and he gets me to fold a hand that he has pretty much crushed as he shows king-jack of spades. In this hand, things get a bit dicey. There's a limp under the gun too, and then the button, who seems very, very tight and straightforward, he puts in a raise to 4,500. And I don't think this particular opponent is doing this just because he's on the button, I think he actually just has a pretty decent hand. And then I look down at ace queen offsuit in the small blind and for the same reasons I stated the hand prior, I think I'm gonna do the same thing here, keep variance low, try to realize the equity of my hand and put in the call instead of electing to three bet. So I call and under the gun limper calls as well. So we are going three ways to a flop of king, 10, queen with two diamonds. So now we have middle pair and the ace of diamonds for the backdoor nut flush draw. We check it over to the under the gun limper who bets 7,000. This is a pretty big bet, however, with our exact hand, I'm not sure we can fold just yet. So I put in the call and the button calls as well. So now we're headed to a turn card, which is an inconsequential seven, but it is a diamond. So now we did pick up our nut flush draw. I check hoping and praying that my opponents will check behind and I can get to a river card. However, the limper bets 16,000. The button tanks and tanks and tanks. I think he has a hand like pocket jacks in this spot. However, he finally lands on a fold and now it's on me. I think it's highly likely I'm behind at this point. I'm losing to all two pairs, straights, and flushes, but my opponent does bet a little over 10 big blinds. And for this price, at the time, I didn't think I could put in the fold just yet. So 
I make the call in this really huge pot and the river is an unfortunate off suit five. It's the five of hearts. I check and now my opponent bets 11,000. This is a very, very small bet. I cannot beat anything at this point. Since we called the flop and picked up equity on the turn, it kind of sucked us in. So I put in the fold and my opponent shows a queen high flush. So very unfortunate, we got ourselves in a very sticky situation and now we definitely took a dent to our stack. In this hand, there's a couple limps in middle position and I look down at five seven of hearts on the button. I flick in the call, the small blind calls as well, the big blind checks his option. So we are going a lot of ways to a flop of queen, 10, deuce with two hearts. So we flop ourselves the seven high flush draw. It folds around to me and having the button, having seven high, but a heart draw, we're gonna put in a bet and I bet 5,000. My opponent in the small blind then check raises to 11,000. I'm not loving it, but with what I have behind, I have a hand that wants to see all five cards we possibly have some fold equity against this particular player, however, very unlikely. So I stick it in for my last 30,000 in chips and he pretty much snap calls. He has 10 deuce off suit for bottom two pair and here's what happened. So unfortunately we did not hit our flush, but if we did, we'd have been in great shape to chip all the way back up to having a healthy stack and with rebuys still open, we're happy to take the spot. The last two hands we played were absolutely disastrous and a little bit unfortunate, but we can always learn from the hands we play and come back better the next time around. All right, we are busto in the tournament, but I think I have a lot of fun spots to review and did my best. That last hand with the five seven of hearts, I think our hand just wants to see all five cards there. We have five high, we possibly have some fold equity, Probably not against that particular player, but uh, got in with the flush draw. Was kind of planning on rebuying, but decided not to. I really want to get some cash game hands in for the vlog. So I'm going to go jump in the 2-5 or 1-2, whatever comes up first. And anyway, super fun playing a tournament. Always love jumping in, getting my feet wet, getting more hands in. And felt like I played pretty freaking well until those last two hands. We got ourselves into some tricky spots, especially with that ace queen. So excited to review these and see what I could have done better or differently. Uh, not put myself in those situations. I think a three bet pre with the ace queen off probably was the play there. But given the button player type, I wasn't sure if he was too light in that spot. So I'm going to head back into TCH and play some cash. See you guys in there. Since we busted the tournament, it's time to get into some cash game action. We're going to play some two, five, $1,000 max buy-in to start, and then it'll be match the stack because this is a brand new table. And we get off to a very hot start because in the very first hand, we win about $250 in a PLO double board bomb pot. In this hand, I'm under the gun and look down at the best starting hand of all time, black aces. I raise it up to $20. Middle position calls and the small blind calls, so we are going to go three ways to a flop of 998 with two diamonds. They check it over to me. Facing two opponents, our hand wants to bet for denial and as well as value, so I put in a bet of $25. Both of my opponents call, so we're going to head to a turn card, which is the king of hearts. They check it over to me, and I think maybe if this was heads up, we can consider checking this card. However, facing two opponents, they can likely have hands like Jack-10 for straight draws, any diamonds for diamond draws, and if they did have a diamond draw and they had the king of diamonds in their hand, they just made a pair. And if they had a 9x combination, I would have expected to hear from them on the flop, so I think for all those reasons, it's good enough to put in a bet here of $60. Unfortunately, they both fold, so they must have not had very strong hands at all, and we're going to take this one down with our pocket aces. In this hand, there's four limps, and I look down at king 10 of diamonds in the big blind, and the way this game is playing, I don't see any merit to raising, as I'm gonna pick up multiple callers, I would have to make it some obnoxious raise size, which I really don't wanna do, facing opponents that will probably call my raise and then play this pot out of position. In a 1-2 game, I might consider doing this as players play way more fit or fold post-flop, but we are in a little bit bigger of a 2-5 game. So I check my option, and we go multi-way to a flop of king, queen, eight with one diamond, so we flop ourselves top pair with a backdoor flush draw. The flop checks around, so we head to a turn, which is the 10 of spades. So now there's a spade flush draw and we have two pair. I put out a bet of $20. Only one player in middle position makes the call, so we're headed to a river card, which is a complete blank. It's the three of hearts. Definitely going to continue going for value here, and I bet $50. I'm hoping I'll get some value on the river, and my opponent does indeed flick in the call, and we show him the king 10, he shows king 8, and we scoop a decent pot. 
In this hand, I play a pot against one of the most volatile and crazy players at the table, which you'll hear about at the end of this vlog when we play a crazy hand. The low jack raises to $30, there's a limp in early position, and then the crazy player raises to $30. I'm in the big blind with 5-4 of hearts, not sure what I was thinking here, but I flicked in the call. The limper folds, so we're going heads up to a flop of king, five, six, with two hearts, so we flop ourselves a pair and a flush draw. I check, he bets $50, and I make the call. We don't block any of our opponent's stronger hands like king x combinations. Sure, we can get some hands to fold, but I think our hand is good enough to just put in the call, having our heart draw and our pair. We head to a turn card, which is the seven of hearts, so we make our five high flush. I check, and unfortunately, my opponent checks behind, so we head to a river card, which is a complete blank. It's an offsuit deuce. I know my opponent is super call happy, very unpredictable, and crazy, so I'm gonna go for some value, and I bet $150. My opponent didn't have much at all, so I'm not sure we could have made much more money on this hand. However, we do scoop the pot. All right, you guys, this was the last hand I played for the night, and it was one of the wildest, craziest, jaw-dropping hands I've ever played. So you know what time it is. It's time to put on those seatbelts and buckle up. There was a limp under the gun by a lady who is very aggressive post-flop and pre-flop. She wasn't afraid to three bet and also put in check raises on flops, so she limps. Then the maniac player who I was telling you about before, he limps as well. Then it folds me on the button and I look down at 10-8 of spades. Being in position against these crazy volatile players, I decide to put in the raise. I make it $15. The small blind comes along, the aggro lady makes the call, and the crazy maniac player makes the call. So we are going four ways to a flop of king 10-8 with two hearts. So this is a very, very dynamic board. However, we have bottom two pair. They check it over to me and on a very, very dynamic board, there are infinite amounts of straight draws, flush draws, but against these very, very loose ranges, I can put in a bet here in position and navigate on future streets. So I put in a bet of $40. The small blind makes the call and then the lady who I told you loves to check raise flops, she makes it $150. This is where it gets interesting. Now the maniac crazy player, he makes the call for $150. So now this pot is getting very, very big. I know the lady in early position loves to check raise and put a lot of pressure. She can easily have a hand like king queen or king jack that she decided to limp and she wants to deny equity with a top pair type holding. She can even have a heart draw at this point. And the crazy maniac to her left, well, he can literally have any two cards. When he flats here, he most likely just has a draw that he doesn't want to fold. So with my stack size and how much money's already in the pot, I was leaning towards the more high variance route and ripping all in. If I flat here, I allow all the draws to see turn cards and plus this board can get really bad for us. So even though it is a little bit scary and more of a high variance route, I think I know exactly where I am in this spot given the player types. Even though I have bottom two pair, I do block a set of tens and a set of eights. The only hand I'm realistically losing to right now is king 10 because pocket kings would have raised pre-flop. So I think I have a good enough hand here to rip ball in and deny equity against all these loose ranges and draws. So I shove for about $750 total. The small blind folds, the lady thinks for a little bit but then puts in the fold, and then the crazy maniac wants a count. He probably just has a draw at this point, so I don't mind getting it in again. Him. He doesn't think very long before sliding in a stack of greens makes the call. He asks if I want to run it twice. It's a bigger pot, so I say sure. I know I'm probably up against a draw, so let's run two turns and two rivers, and here's what happened. Two pairs. I could not believe my eyes as my opponent called with 7-9 offsuit, no backdoor flush draws, no heart in his hand, just the bottom end of a bad straight draw when I could easily have him almost drawing near dead if I decided to do this with a hand like Queen Jack of Diamonds, for example, then he's drawing almost stone dead. Really, really ambitious call by my opponent to call with the 7-9 in this spot, especially given the action, but sometimes the gamblers get rewarded. We were about a 70% favorite to win that hand, and we somehow find a way to lose both boards. But I'll take that spot all day long, and I'm happy to know that even with my bottom two pair on that dynamic board, we pretty much got the exact result we wanted. Sure, it would have been nice for him to fold and we just pick up all that dead money, but I love it when he makes the call, drawing to 30% equity, and we'll be leaving the poker room with zero chips today, but there's always tomorrow. <laughs> 
I mean, honestly, guys, I waited the whole session to get this guy. Super gambly, doesn't like to fold. I mean, just a really nice spot there where we're blocking all the sets. If someone has pocket kings, good for them. We're really only realistically losing to like king 10 in that spot. It's very draw heavy. Player's gonna have a very wide range of hands. So there was so much dead money in the middle. I thought my shove was a great spot to kind of isolate and deny equity against those hands and get them to fold. Realistically, he should be folding there and we just scoop a very very nice pot but when he makes the call we're still in great shape he has seven nine offsuit no back doors no back door flush draws just a naked open-ended bad end of the straight draw <laughs> so you gotta love it uh, we run it twice and unfortunately just finds a way to win both but I mean, it is what it is, it happens. Luckily, we had a great day at the tables in the sense of getting hands in, getting experience, getting some interesting hands for the vlog. We were in for a thousand, out for the big old goose egg. Doesn't feel very good, but I'll be back to live another day. And I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. If you did, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world to me. We're just getting started. It is only up from here.